Today, we're diving into a topic more contentious than a pigeon trying to build a nest in Times Square during rush hour. The top 10 lies Nas Daily told about Palestine. Nas Daily, the chipper, globe-trotting vlogger, peddling feel-good stories. What could be so sinister? Well, as we'll soon find out, sometimes even the sunniest disposition can cast long, misleading shadows. We're not here to demonize anyone, but we are here to dissect some very problematic narratives. Let's unpack these claims, separate fact from fiction, and maybe, just maybe, learn a thing or two about media literacy and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict along the way. Let's uncover the truth behind these misleading statements. Now, you might be thinking, hold on, isn't Nas Daily Palestinian? Yes and no, he's a Palestinian citizen of Israel, which, as we'll see, are two very different things. His infamous statement, I am Israeli first, then Palestinian, might sound innocuous at first, but it's a bit like saying, I'm a passenger on the Titanic, but, you know, more importantly, I'm a first-class passenger. The power dynamics inherent in that statement are impossible to ignore. It's not just a matter of personal identity. It speaks to a broader attempt to erase Palestinian identity and prioritize an Israeli narrative. Imagine if a British citizen during colonization said, I'm British first, then Indian. This statement ignores the lived experiences of Palestinians who face systematic discrimination and oppression under Israeli rule. So, while Nas Daly is entitled to his own identity, presenting this particular statement as a harmless fact is not only misleading but also deeply insensitive to the struggles faced by millions of Palestinians. Nas Daly suggests that Israel came into existence peacefully, which is a bit like saying the Titanic sank because of a slight navigational error. This narrative completely disregards the Nakba, the Arabic word for catastrophe, which saw the expulsion of over 700,000 Palestinians from their homes during the 1948 war that led to Israel's creation. Imagine being forced from your home, your land, your history, and having that trauma brushed aside as a mere historical footnote. To say Israel's creation was peaceful is not just inaccurate. It's an insult to the millions of Palestinians who continue to live with the consequences of that displacement. This isn't about dwelling on the past. It's about acknowledging the root causes of the current situation. Ignoring the Nakba is like trying to understand the plot of The Godfather Part II without watching The Godfather. You're missing crucial context. Nas Daly's often upbeat portrayal of life in the region tends to downplay the very real suffering faced by Palestinians living under Israeli occupation. It's like filming a travel vlog in a war zone and focusing solely on the delicious street food. While he might showcase individual success stories, he often does so without acknowledging the systemic oppression and daily hardships faced by many Palestinians. Yes, there are inspiring stories of resilience and hope, but these should not overshadow the ongoing human rights violations, the restrictions on movement, the lack of access to basic resources, and the constant threat of violence that many Palestinians face. That's the reality for many Palestinians, a reality that often gets lost in Nastali's overly simplified narrative. Chapter 4. Peace without justice, a false equivalence. Nas Daly often argues that both sides are equally at fault for missed peace opportunities. It's a classic both sides argument, like saying both the fire and the fire department are equally responsible for the house burning down. While it's tempting to frame this as a conflict with two equal sides, the reality is far more nuanced. This framing ignores the power imbalance inherent in the relationship between Israel, the occupier, and the Palestinians, the occupied. True peace cannot be achieved without addressing the root causes of the conflict, including the occupation, the settlements, and the systemic discrimination faced by Palestinians. It's like trying to fix a broken leg with a band-aid. You're addressing the symptom, not the cause. Chapter 5. Whitewashing Israeli Crimes. A Dangerous Omission. Now, we're not saying Nas Daly is intentionally trying to mislead anyone but his tendency to omit or downplay Israel's role in the ongoing occupation and the hardships faced by Palestinians creates a dangerously incomplete picture. He often focuses on individual stories of coexistence and cooperation, which, while heartwarming, 
can inadvertently whitewash the larger systemic issues at play. This isn't about denying the possibility of coexistence or peace. It's about acknowledging the very real and often brutal realities of the occupation. Ignoring these realities does a disservice to both Palestinians and Israelis who are genuinely working towards a just and lasting peace. Chapter 6 Palestinian resistance, more than just an obstacle. Nastaly tends to oversimplify Palestinian resistance, portraying it as an unnecessary obstacle to peace. He often frames Palestinian resistance solely through the lens of violence, ignoring the decades of peaceful protests, legal challenges, and international advocacy that have been met with largely ineffective results. To dismiss all forms of Palestinian resistance as counterproductive is not only inaccurate, but also dehumanizing. It ignores the very real frustrations and grievances that fuel this resistance, reducing it to mere inconvenience rather than a legitimate struggle for freedom and self-determination. Chapter 7 Palestinian History – Rewriting the Past Now, history is a tricky thing. It's not just about what happened, it's about who gets to tell the story. And Nas Daly's version of history, particularly when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, has been accused of some serious inaccuracies. It's like watching a documentary about the American Revolution narrated entirely by King George III. You might learn some interesting things, but you're definitely not getting the whole story. He often oversimplifies complex historical events, presenting a narrative that aligns more closely with Israeli perspectives while downplaying or omitting key aspects of Palestinian history and claims. This isn't about erasing Israeli narratives. It's about ensuring that Palestinian voices and perspectives are also heard and understood. Chapter 8. The Elephant in the Room, Zionism's Role. Now here's a word that tends to make people uncomfortable. Zionism. It's a complex and often misunderstood ideology, and Nas Daly's content often skirts around it, leaving viewers with an incomplete understanding of its role in the conflict. Zionism, at its core, is the belief in the establishment of a Jewish state in Palestine. While this might seem straightforward, it ignores the fact that Palestine was already inhabited, leading to the displacement and dispossession of Palestinians. It's a bit like showing up at a party, declaring it your own, and then being surprised when the original guests are a bit miffed. Understanding Zionism, with all its complexities and contradictions, is crucial to comprehending the motivations and actions of both sides in this conflict. Ignoring it is like trying to understand a Shakespearean tragedy without knowing anything about the characters or their motivations. Chapter 9. Two Sides to Every Story, Not Always. Nas. Daly often frames the Israeli-Palestinian conflict as a two-sided issue with equal blame. It's a tempting narrative, one that appeals to our sense of fairness and balance, but it's also a dangerous oversimplification, like saying a bully and the kid being bullied are equally responsible for the fight. The Israeli-Palestinian conflict is not a playground squabble. It's a complex historical and geopolitical issue with a clear power imbalance. To frame it as a simple two-sided issue ignores the realities of occupation, the ongoing human rights violations, and the systemic discrimination faced by Palestinians. Chapter 10, A Voice for Palestinians, A Question of Authenticity. Nas Daly has often presented himself as a bridge between cultures, a voice for Palestinians on the global stage. It's a noble goal but one that has been met with skepticism and criticism from many within the Palestinian community. It's a bit like a man giving a TED talk on the struggles of womanhood. While he claims to represent Palestinian views, his content often aligns more closely with Israeli narratives, leading many to question his authenticity as a spokesperson for Palestinian issues. This is not to say that only Palestinians can speak about Palestine, it's about recognizing the importance of lived experience and the dangers of speaking for a community without truly understanding or representing its diverse perspectives. You might have visited France, but you haven't truly experienced French cuisine. 
So, there you have it. The top 10 lies, or perhaps more accurately, misleading narratives that Nas Daily has perpetuated about Palestine. It's not about cancelling anyone or shutting down conversations. It's about encouraging critical thinking and media literacy, especially when it comes to complex and emotionally charged issues like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Nas Daily's content, while entertaining and often well-produced, offers a very particular and ultimately incomplete view of this complex issue. It's crucial to approach such content with a critical eye and seek out diverse perspectives that fully represent the voices of those affected. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more in-depth analyses.